It's time to hit the road and discover Texas with Annie Studebaker. Get ready to travel deep into the heart of the Lone Star State, meeting friendly folks and exploring fascinating places. Experience a way of life like nowhere else in the world as we uncover the rich history and culture of Texas. Discover adventure, discover excitement, discover Texas with Annie Studebaker. Today, our travels take us to Bandera, Texas, a town full of rich history and the home of Diamond H Ranch. At this ranch, we will see how the quail are hatched, raised, harvested, dressed, and packaged. So don't go away as we discover Texas together. My name is Chris Hughes, and I am the owner of Diamond H Ranch, a quail farm here in Bandera, Texas. Uh, the history of this quail farm is uh, I grew up in a family business uh, that sells wild game meats. Uh, that business is Broken Arrow Ranch and so we got started selling uh, venison from deer and antelope, field harvesting deer and antelope, and branched out into some wild boar uh, and, and a few other products and one of the challenges in that business is always trying to find what is the next product that you can add on while staying true to uh, some of the philosophies that we had in that in that uh, business. So quail is kind of a natural fit with venison and, and game meats. And Diamond H Ranch uh, is located here in Bandera, which is about 40 minutes away from Broken Arrow Ranch, where I grew up. So relatively close by, by Texas standards. And it was a business that was operated by another family for uh, around 15 years. And then we heard that uh, the business was, or the property was for sale. And uh, we started our, our discussions with the previous owner, the, the Harringtons, uh, Tom and Polly Harrington, and uh, organized the deal to, to purchase the property back in 2010. And we've spent a long time starting to get everything back up and running again, put everything back into uh, a good repair after it had added Lane Fallow. And, uh, I've kind of grown it uh, year, year by year. Part of the reason we're so concerned about biosecurity, especially right here, is this, the, this being the hatchery. It's, it's the cleanest place in the entire farm. Uh, so we've got the eggs sitting in here. If you introduce that into the eggs, uh, you, you get a poor hatch rate. Uh, as the chicks are incubating, or as the eggs are incubating, again, if you introduce anything into there, you're, you're uh, incubating these at high temperature, high humidity, which is perfect for growing viruses, bacteria, well, uh, right. it's the perfect environment for it. So we've got to try to keep that out and keep this area as sterile as possible. Wow, that's a lot of eggs. So, so this is a week's worth of eggs from our breeders. Can I touch You may. Yes? Yes. Look at that. Yeah. So these eggs, we, we collect our eggs from the breeders uh, throughout the week and uh, we're getting ready to put these into what we call our setter. This is where they're going to start incubating. Um, so these have been sitting, storing in here starting on, on Saturday all the way up here now through Friday. And it's a little bit cool in here, it's about 55 degrees and the reason for that is this is like hitting the pause button. On, on the incubation of these eggs. So you can hold these eggs at a cool temperature for about 10 days before you start seeing a decline in the hatch percentage that gets out of there. You hold it longer than that, then, then the little embryos inside of here start to die. But you can hold it for a short period of time. So we're gonna move these uh, into our incubators to let them start doing the actual incubating, mimicking a mother hen sitting on the on the egg, so it's going to go from kind of this, yes, kind of go from this kind of this cooler pause uh, 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 temperature to the warmer. Okay, let's start, let's start growing temperature. So normally in nature, uh, when this egg is hatched, 
or this egg is laid, it's immediately under the mother hen. So right. it's it's it starts. So if it wasn't, it could last ten days. On could do it well in, in, in nature you don't ever get it this you know this cold so oh, uh, they're gonna this is cold yeah so they're gonna they're just gonna kind of hold this or they're gonna start incubating immediately but here because we're not trying to do it one at a time we're trying to do it in a big a big batch a big block uh, science has figured out poultry science has figured out that this. you can you can hold the egg for a limited time you can't do it indefinitely you can't do it for a long time but you can hold it for a week and, and not not really suffer very, very neat. Okay, let's go check out the other part right. of the hatchery. Very good. So this is the massive incubator. This, I see you have two of them. This is a big incubator. Actually, we have more than two. We've, we've got a whole bunch of them scattered around Three. the room here that are that are used at various times and for various size batches. But this is an old, this is, this is one of our favorites because it's an old one, really an antique that we restored. Uh, and got it, got it working again to more modern standards. Good. What types of quail do you use? These are Caternix quail. Caternix? Caternix. These are Jumbo a and Texas A&M Caternix quail. Uh, they're, they're native to Europe and Asia, uh, but the, the big advantage is that uh, these birds naturally mature faster than a lot of other a lot of other quail. So whereas a, a, a native bobwhite quail matures in 16 to 18 weeks, the Caternix quail matures in six weeks. Uh, they stay in here for 18 days. Uh, temperature is right around 99 degrees, so it's it's hot. I mean, it's it's basically the a quail's uh, body temperature is uh, 9900 degrees. So that's what a mother hen, what it, what it would feel like with the mother hen sitting on top of it. So let me ask you this. So they start hatching in that? Heat? They do not. Oh, brother. <laughs> there is a system. So there, there is a system. So the other part, like I said uh, earlier with the biosecurity, uh, you know, this is, it's, high, it's high temperature, it's high humidity. It's perfect for growing viruses and bacteria. That's why we have to keep all of this very, very clean. So after every batch we go through, it's why we've got this material on here that allows us to go through and sanitize uh, this incubator after each turn. Uh, so uh, the other part is if chicks started hatching in here, two things happen. Number one, they don't really have anywhere to move around. I and mean, they're gonna they're gonna fall off of these trays and uh, right. it's, it's, it's not gonna be very nice for the chicks. The other part is when they hatch and they, they pip out of these eggs, it creates a lot of debris. You get eggshells, you get feathers, uh, all, all that kind of dander and things like that that can contaminate a, uh, an incubator and make it that much more difficult to clean. This has got to be the, mo the, the cleanest, cleanest, cleanest of the clean. Okay. So, uh, what we, so we don't introduce any kind of viruses or bacteria into these eggs. So, the eggs sit in here, we can clean this every time, but it's an easy job and we can make sure it's, it's perfectly sterile when they start. When these things are ready to hatch a few days before, we move them out of here and move them into our stage two, which is our hatchers. The eggs are moved onto trays and we can get those dirty okay. and keep these clean. So they're here 18 days? Uh, they're actually, they're here for, they hatch in 18 days. Um, so, yeah, so they move here in 16 days and then move over there. And those shelves in there throughout the day, they'll rotate back and forth to mimic a hen sitting on there. It helps, you know, stop birth defects and any other, you know, problems that they may have if they were sitting still. And here you can, you can see some of the trays. So eggs have moved from the setters. These are eggs that are ready to hatch and they'll, be, they'll start hatching over the weekend, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You can see that they're here loose on these trays. As, as the chicks start to pip out, they'll be, they'll be contained into these trays as well as you know, any of the shells, any of the, you know, the dander and the feathers and the fluff. Uh, you know, we can come in and we'll clean and sanitize this, 
but the eggs are only in here uh, for a couple of days and they've, they've matured, so we don't have the same risk uh, of introducing the viruses and the bacteria here as we do uh, over there with the eggs. They don't hatch too early. They're all pretty, pretty much on a schedule. You'll see them, uh, you'll see them hatch on um, Sunday. The big day is Monday, and then you'll see a few, few remnants on Tuesday, and then it's over. Oh yeah, there you go. Perfect. starting to wiggle and get out and you can see that they're they're actually it's called pipping they're cutting a circle around the egg with their beaks from the inside so this one here she's it's starting about to, to come out about to come out So from the hatchery, the, the quail are brought here, um, and they've got high heat because yes, they're, they're pretty they're, they're pretty vulnerable at this age. Wow, um, it's hot. You know, a lot of a lot of access to water, a lot of access to feed, and we have them in these in these corrals uh, to keep them close to this heat and close to this feed yes. and this water, so that they don't won't go wandering off into some dark corner and and then get. Uh, Oh, die from exposure. Wow. So these are how old would you say? Uh, these were born today. Yeah. Today and they're already here moving around? They are. Eating and... So the one you saw hatch earlier will, would be doing this within a couple hours. Amazing. How cute. Look at that. They look so healthy just moving around. Well, the Coternix, you're trying to raise as calm as possible, domesticated or as calm as possible, uh, because really, uh, you, you don't want them stressed. Anytime that we're working with them, anytime that you know, even at, up to harvest, uh, you don't want them stressed, um, because that would affect the quality of the meat. So I think our guys are in here multiple times every day, working, working the birds, working through them, checking the water lines, checking the feeders, checking the birds themselves. They go from the hatchery to what we call the brood area, which would be the inside area. Okay. And they're there for three weeks. Three and then weeks. after three weeks, they're moved to, this is what we call the grow out area, or outside, uh, which it's still, it's covered, but we have these, these open air curtains on the side, not a ventilation system where you've got everything sealed off and you're trying to just blow air through here with, with big fans. We're trying to do Sunshine and, nice and sunshine and fresh air, um, wow. and uh, so they're out here for another four weeks. Four weeks, and then they're ready to be harvested. And then they're ready to be harvested. Then we'll come, we'll gather them all up, and we'll take them over to process. And how do full grown ones look? Uh, pretty close to this. These are around five weeks old, so they've got a a couple more weeks to go. But they'll look just like this, just a little they're bit larger. White. They are white. So. Uh, one of the interesting things about the Coternix that we raise is we actually raise the white species of these birds. Uh, a lot of places will raise, the, naturally their color is brown, um, but we raise a white species and the reason for that is when you pluck uh, the bird, and you pull the, pull the feathers off, you get a really nice clean looking skin uh, on that bird. Most of your domesticated poultry is white. The turkey that you eat on your Thanksgiving table is probably a white turkey. A lot of the chickens that you eat are also white chickens. And the difference is, uh, with the brown bird, when you pluck it, you still get some of that pigment in there kind of. So that's the difference between a brown bird and a white bird. It, it just has to do with the appearance of the skin uh, at the end of the process. Wow. <coughs> and that's the water system right there. Right, so you got the water system and the feed, feed lines all the way around.
So this is the breeder room. So before we go to harvest, we go through the rooms or the, the, the grow out barns, we kind of select the best specimens uh, from each batch on a regular basis and then bring them into here where we have them make our next generation of quail. Awesome. Uh, so and they, they'll stay in here for about six months. Uh, and then at the end of six months, uh, they've, their, their product, productivity has, has pretty well declined and they've uh, we moved them out for processing. So, you keep all of them for the eggs first and then you process them for meat. Right, right. But we, don't, we won't use it as kind of our prime meat at that point. Oh, we'll use it for okay. some, of our, some of our trim meat. Okay, but some of them, you just don't wait till they lay eggs. That's strictly for harvesting. And for right, meat. right. So what we'll do is, is most of the birds are destined for harvest. Uh, just, just a few of them, you know, some of the, 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 the top specimens will move into here for, for breeding. Yep. Okay, okay. So in here, they're, they're, they're in, these, in these pens, there's actually a little pass-through, so they're not just in one little pen. They can, they've got free roam oh, back and forth. So food, food and water, it's kind of the same as the, little, as the grow out area, just, just a little bit smaller. but. Um, They'll lay the eggs, and the eggs will come down onto these conveyor belts. And twice a day, uh, our hatchery employees will gather up the eggs, uh, and they'll actually catalog everything based on row and location. So they'll know, oh. you know, who how production's going, who's who's producing eggs, who's starting to uh, tailor off on their production, and all of that. So this section, they're free to roam. Right. So all of them are contained to that big area. Well, that's right. That's good. That's right. good. They're not just contained. Right. It's not just this. Place. It's it's, a, it's a much larger. Openings. Yeah. It's kind of an apartment complex. So they lay they lay their eggs and they all come down onto this conveyor belt, and then they get collected oh, uh, throughout great. the day. So we are now walking into the processing room where they were, uh, they will all be cutting all the products that we make. Awesome. Everything from our semi-boneless to our legs to our boneless breast, every product is made in this room. Okay, before we go in there, tell me, what are the rules to enter before we enter this facility right now? Enter, here? making sure we have on one of our smocks right. and, and, some sort, and some sort of head protection. Or, awesome. And I guess my hat, quali my hat qualifies for that. But, Good deal. Yeah. Um, the birds get brought up from cage or in cages to this back door okay. and they get unloaded onto this table and our harvesters pull out one bird at a time and pull off each head. And then they get put into, uh, what would you call those? They, they're, well, they're, they're put here in trays for, mm -hmm. for bleeding. Yeah, for bleeding. Yes, yes. Yes. So to drain all the blood out there and that helps with the quality of the meat Definitely. throughout yes. the process. Okay. And then they get put into the scalder right here where it heats them up and it loosens the feathers off. Okay. And then once they are uh, taken out of here, they get put into this, which is a the spinner. It's a spinner. A picker. A, a picker. And that and it will. Removes the feathers. Yes, and they come out without any feathers on them. And this is where they kind of spin, right? Right. Mm -hmm. okay. right. And it knocks off all the feathers. Yeah. So that spins around, and you've got little rubber fingers that basically act like uh, like real human fingers, just pulling off of the uh, pulling off the feathers. Oh, interesting. So, see, I was thinking that everybody started removing things like that. That's why I hate to clean a chicken. Yeah, no, this does it in 30 seconds. Amazing. Yeah. And how many can you put in here? Uh, we do batches of 25. Wow, 25. All right, and then we go to the next room, right? So yes. then they're loaded out of here. They're passed through this door. Oh, okay. And uh, working down this table is where you would have your uh, meat inspector. Uh, Inspecting the bird, okay. making sure it's clean and safe and wholesome, uh, as well as we do the initial evisceration, any kind of uh, fine tuning on the feathering, you know, clean up. Uh, then it gets weighed, sorted, and put into 
ice barrels to chill overnight. Neat. And okay. So let's take a look at the process. All right. All right. Ready to go? All right. So what we have is today is a processing day. Uh, so the, the slaughter and processing are kind of two separate operations. So on a slaughter day, this, this table would be lined uh, with, with our employees, and, and they're doing the evisceration and the cleaning, uh, the rinsing, the inspection, uh, and, and then they're chilled. And then once they're chilled, they come, they're getting brought out here uh, where they're getting washed off one more time. Uh, and then we're starting the initial uh, uh, sorting for quality and size as well as some of the processing that's happening at, at different parts around the room. Oh, wow. Look how he does when he's washing. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so that's the process. Yeah, so we've got a few different processes. We're making some whole quail right here. So this is a whole, a whole bone-in quail. So he's, he's cleaning out the inside, cleaning out the, uh, the exterior, checking for feathers. Not, well, these will not be cut. Oh, they do sell them whole. So, some we sell whole and some we sell as semi boneless, but these are already, yeah. already semi boneless. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is one of the most popular cuts. This is the semi boneless quail. And what it is, is it's the whole quail uh, with the, all the bones removed except for the drumstick and the wing bone. Oh, that's amazing. From that, you can, uh, they can cook it like that, which is nice, uh, just with some seasoning, or you can uh, uh, stuff it with any kind of stuffing of your choice. I'm going to have to take a couple of them. Yeah, yeah those, are, those are great. They look yeah. very interesting. This is an interesting process. As you can see, they get pretty quick at doing this, too. Yeah, I, if, if I were to do this, it would take me upwards oh, yeah. of five minutes just to do one, and they can do one in less than, in less than a minute. Wow. So now we're making some of our, our quail poppers. So these are the, the, the quail breast with a half slice of jalapeno wrapped in bacon and skewered. Do you marinate the breast first or not? Uh, we don't. We just leave it, leave it as is. It yeah, because everybody right likes there. to do their own their own thing wow. with the with the poppers. So, so they we can leave actually it. put their own seasoning? Right, you can put your own seasoning on it, put whatever kind of flavor. A lot of the flavor choice comes from the glaze at the end. You could do a barbecue or a teriyaki or a honey or anything like that. And this is this is Israel, our uh, processing manager. Hi Israel. So he's in charge of this whole operation in here. Oh, okay. So he is uh, labeling each one of these. And here we have a quail that is semi-boneless and large. Yep. This is beautiful packaging. This is nice. So after, after they're processed, all the birds come over here for one final quality check. They're looking over the birds, making sure they're, they're free of any blemishes, as well as all the feathers are off of it, doing any kind of last minute picking. Uh, so there's actually three separate stages throughout the process where they're checking on feathers. Then they get packaged, everything's vacuum sealed, uh, and it's ready to get shipped out. Well, I we appreciate you all coming out and, and touring around with us. And so, We've prepared a little barbecue for you out there, some barbecue with some quail. Uh, so we'll get to try out some of this stuff uh, and wrap up the day on a good note. We have truly enjoyed learning about quail production at Diamond H Ranch. 
These delicate birds live in the perfect environment and are provided with healthy diets which produce hearty and tasty birds. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on the road as we discover Texas together.